Hi there. Isn't this a pretty ornament? I think so. These are some we made. They're made out of plaster of Paris that we poured into a silicone mold and then paint them. This is a very long process because it takes time to let everything dry and cure. But if you are interested in making some ornaments like this, if you'll stay tuned, we'll show you how it's done. So I'm so glad you stayed tuned to watch this little project. I must warn you, this is not a quick process. It is you do certain stages and then you have to let things cure and dry. So with that being said, I'm going to tell you what we need for this project. You are going to need some silicone molds and these are designed to make candy in, but you can make um, these ornaments in them as well. These are just little Christmas ornaments. And see all that detail in these ornaments? That's going to show on the ornaments that you're making with this plaster of Paris. You'll also have some snowmen and snowflakes. Some very detailed um, snowflakes there. So these are going to make them really fun to paint. Now you don't have to do this just for Christmas ornaments. These will make great ornaments any time of the year for any occasion. If you can find some molds for, you know, a birthday or something, that'd be fun. But, you know, we have Valentine's, St. Patrick's, Easter. We have some Easter molds right here I was going to show you. There's a lot of crosses and butterflies. These will be pretty for Easter and springtime. Lots of detail on some of these crosses. So all that detail makes it really easy to paint. We also have some spring flowers. So that'll be pretty. If you're using these for candy, make sure you clean them up very well. There's no residue of the plaster of Paris. And if you've made candy in your molds, make sure you clean them up the candy residue as well before you mix the plaster of Paris. Now some um, precautions before we start. It's not really going to hurt your hands, but if you do get it on your skin, I recommend you wipe it off with a paper towel or wash them as quickly as possible. After you mix this up, you only have a 7 to 12 minute work time because it will start to clump up. So only mix what you think you're going to use within a matter of minutes. If it starts to get clumpy while you're still using it, throw it out and mix up some new because it's not going to work well. And then also we learn from experience, do not mix any pigment into the plaster because it can change the consistency and mess up the curing process. And also when you're mixing it, you want to do it slowly because if you do it too fast, the powder that you're mixing up is going to up in the air and you don't want to breathe that and then also it will cause air pockets which will affect your finished project and you don't want that either so we're following the directions on the package but basically what you're going to need is three cups of the plaster of Paris and a cup and a half of room temperature water it says to use cold we've tried it with cold it between 40 and 50 degrees, but we've used cold water and it doesn't mix well, it's clumpy. So I recommend measuring your water, letting it sit for a little while while you're getting everything else together. So this is the first step to making these ornaments. So let's get started. So I said we're gonna be using three cups of plaster of Paris, and I have a measuring cup that is a half a cup increment in measurement. So I'm going to put a total of six in here. I'm going to get it level. And also dump it in your bowl slowly so the powder doesn't 
gather up in the air. So that was one. Okay, so we've got our three cups, and you just want to kind of level it out a little bit in your bowl. Okay, so now I've got my cup and a half of room temperature. I'm using a fork. I am using a plastic fork that I can just throw away, but if you don't have any plastic forks, you can use just a real fork. It will wash away, and it's not going to cause any damage. So as I said before, we're going to mix really slowly. This is a process, so it requires a lot of patience. If you don't have patience, this may not be the project for you. If you're doing this with children, if, you know, their attention span is, you know, low or you know they don't have a lot of patience maybe you could do this part and make the molds and just have them included in the painting process of it so i'm just trying to get all this incorporated without making a mess pour a little bit more water All right, so we did speed up the camera, so don't do it as fast as that was. But we got this mixed up, so we need to get going before it starts to dry. So I've got my mold, and you need to make sure you use a level surface for your mold because you want them to come out evenly. I'm just trying to get rid of some of these air pockets that's in here. Okay. All right, so you're just going to fill the mold up. All the way to the top and you can use your paper towel to wipe around it so we're just gonna let it drip in so let me get this hand filled and we'll wrap, wipe off the excess around it. All right, I think I filled this up a little too much, but when you get it, you're going to level it off with a knife. But use the smooth side because you don't want the um, serrated side mixed in. This is real bad. And make sure you're using a tablecloth or, you know, Something that you don't care messes up. Okay, this was beyond my skill set. <laughs> so I let my husband take over. So he's doing a better job. So he's going to show you how to do it properly. I just made a big mess with it. 
So he used a knife and make sure you use the side that is not serrated because you don't want those marks in it. And as I said before, if you're using your kitchen table or whatever, make sure you have a tablecloth that you just do crafting on because you don't want, you know, to ruin your table or ruin a nice tablecloth. And you can see this cures very, starts to harden very quickly. So that's why I handed it over to him so that he could take over. I'm not sure those are going to turn out, but the ones that I started. But we make a good team, so that's good there. He made some earlier that were, they're already dry and they're ready to paint. So after we demonstrate this to you, we'll come back with the ones that are already finished. And show you but basically after you get your molds filled they need to stay in the mold a minimum of two hours so after about two hours if you want to check it you can take a toothpick and run across it and if it leaves a mark it's not ready if it doesn't leave a mark then it's ready so it looks like this is starting to um, be not usable so you do have to work fast with it so that's why i had him take over for me and it looks like the larger molds might be a little easier so he's about done with this one so we're going to let these dry for about two hours but we're going to come back with the ones we've already made and show you options to uh, paint and decorate with them. So stay tuned. Okay, so these are some of the ones that we made earlier and they're already dry and they're ready to paint. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of different ways you can paint them. We've got a tray of watercolor, so I'm gonna use these first and then I'm gonna use the acrylic paints for the next one. So let's get started with that one. Let's see, what are we gonna paint first? Let's do this little snowman. All right, so we're gonna start with the watercolors. So we're gonna wet our brush, and I cleaned the brush in here earlier, that's why it's tinted. So we're just gonna cover the snowman with white. I think I'm gonna use a bigger brush for that. So here's our white watercolor. And it's really not making a whole lot of difference. You know, you don't put too much water in on watercolor. Because it doesn't get enough paint here. I would recommend this for smaller children. Or if you just have watercolors and that's what you want to use. Okay. Hopefully when this dries, it will show up a little better. So next I'm going to do, he has a little carrot nose. So here's an orange, a nice rich orange right here. Okay, let's see if we can get that paint in there. I'm using a little fine tip. Okay, the orange shows up well. You may notice I'm doing this left-handed. That's right. All right, so we got that orange nose carrot painted. Let's do his eyes. What color should we do the eyes? Basic black for coal? Or should we give him blue eyes? Hmm. Let's be unique. Let's give him blue eyes. 
I've never seen a snowman with blue eyes, but we will curl, make one today. Actually, that's a little greenish in there. So there, we have a blue-eyed snowman. All right, we need to paint a scarf. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I'm going to go with purple. That was my mother's favorite color. So I'm going to paint his scarf purple. So right now I'm just using watercolors and it does very well on here. I can't see the white very much. It didn't really, because they dried white. So you're not going to see that very well. Oh, I like this purple scarf. There's our purple scarf. Let's paint the long end of the scarf. Actually, this watercolor is doing a lot better than I thought it would. We do have a lot of detail here. There, we have a purple scarf. I like the purple scarf. All right, let's clean this. What color are we going to make the mittens? Let's make green mittens. All right, so I got a pretty green here. Here's his mittens right here. And we're gonna paint those green. Wow, these watercolors really work. I knew they would, but I thought it would be more faded. I remember I used to make um, some play clay ornaments with my girls when they were little and they used watercolor on those but I can show you that recipe one day it's made with cornstarch and baking soda it's a little process too but you cut them out with cookie cutters all right so we got his mittens done now all I think we need is the buttons. I think I'm going to do black. For the buttons. Now I will say the watercolors are probably going to dry a lot faster than the acrylics. But in any case, I would let them dry completely before you do a whole lot with them. All right, so I'm done with my snowman that I used in the watercolors. Not bad. Those colors showed up very well. But now we're going to switch to some acrylics. And I have an old um, egg carton that when we're done, we can just throw it away. Let's do this snowman. Okay, let's see if we use the white gloss acrylic, if it shows up better on this snowman. I'll put a little white in my egg carton here. Wash that paint brush off. All right, so let's um, paint the snowman. Okay, acrylic, white paint does show up a little much better 
than the watercolor. Much, much better. You know what? I'm just going to paint over it. And then we'll fill in the details with color. So that's how you would build a snowman, right? You would build him and then you would add the details. Okay, so I hope this turns out well. So I painted the snowman solid white, which I feel was easier. Now we'll see if that was a mistake or not. If not, we'll grab another one. All right, so let's do this one a little more traditionally. We're going to do the eyes and the buttons black. Because you used to use a um, coal to make the eyes and the buttons. So I'm going to use this little thin tip right here. I poured it in my egg crate here. Get the excess off. So we're just going to dab the eyes. Let's get the buttons. Yeah, I kind of went outside the lines. But hey. Painting is not my skill set. So I'm just doing the best I can with what I have. I'm just having fun. And that's what I want you to do. Have fun fun. Okay, so we are going to make a scarf and I think I want to stripe it, but what do I want to stripe it with? I want to use red and green to make it a Christmas scarf. We can do that. So shake these up good before you pour. All right, so we're going to make all of our stripes for this scarf. I think I'm going to start with the green. And I'm just going to just make some stripes here. This way. My husband's a lot better at this. But the purpose is not perfection. The purpose in this project is to create something and have fun while you're doing it. I guarantee you, if he paints these, you will know who painted which ones. And he probably will paint some of these. Okay, so we got the green stripes on our scarf. Now we're going to fill it in with the red. Here's a red. So in between each green, we'll go a red. Yeah, we have a nice red and green striped scarf. Okay, what about this nose? 
It's made out of a carrot, and carrots are orange. I had to mix a little yellow and red together to make orange. I didn't have an orange paint. But you just mix together until you come up with the color you desire. There's his little orange carrot nose. Okay, next we have the mittens. What color are we going to do the mittens? I already have green out, so I'm going to do green mittens. that brush cleaned out really good. All right. Let's do green mittens. If you do this project, would you please let me know? Feel free to send, you know, via email any pictures that you did with your kids or that you did yourself. I'd love to see it. But by all means, just have a lot of fun with it, okay? All right, let's compare our two snowmen. This one was done with watercolors. This one was done with acrylics. The white watercolor paint didn't show up very well. The white acrylic did. It's very white there. But I still think this, I'm very impressed that the color how the color uh, turned out on the watercolor. I think it's very pretty. So when they dry, they may look a little different, but I just want to show you some different options. You can also use glitter on some of these. Let's um, paint a snow, uh, snowflake. We'll put these over here to dry. And let's see. I think I'm going to do what I did before. Paint the whole snowflake with the white acrylic paint because we know the watercolor just didn't do it as far as the white's concerned. All the other colors I think were very vi vibrant. Oh, I accidentally did it in the green. Oh well. We're going to call it a leaf now. So, I guess you do have to pay attention. But you know, mistakes happen. All right. Let's start a different one. I'm going to pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm only using the white. Not using the green right now. I've never seen a green snowflake. If you have an italic blue or something like that, or a silver. Okay, so I painted the snowflake solid white. Let's see. I think I got a silver right here. Let's see how this silver works. Okay, I think what we need to do is let the white dry, and then we can paint the detail with another color. So, I'm going to leave you at that. I'm going to leave the rest up to your imagination, but I just want to show you the difference up close. The one with the purple scarf was done with watercolors. I think the colors turned out very well, except for the white on the snowman. This one was done with acrylic. I think it's going to come out a little glossier. You can use a little um, clear varnish on these if you would like. You don't have to, but that is an option. So just let me know if you do this, how you enjoy it. If you have any tips or tricks to make this a better project. Uh, if you want to send me pictures of your project, I would love that. So I'm going to leave you for now, and we will have another
crafting project soon. So I hope you will return to see that project later. So I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you later.